Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Eric Reed, who's the CEO and founder of Reed 5 Group. Eric, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. I'm excited to get into a conversation with you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, give us a little bit of your background and then what led you to form your um, agency, Read 5 Group. Well, I, I came up through media and the alternative press in particular. And when I say the alternative press, um, I mean, in most major cities, there was a Thursday publication that would come out and talk about what was going on for the weekend, et cetera. It was Detroit Metro Times for me. It was Indianapolis Nouveau as well. Um, so I came up through media. Then I went to, uh, you know, leading teams and building out sales and marketing structures. And then I did some startup work with uh, uh, a company called iNet Interactive in, uh, in the greater Cincinnati area. Uh, that was just e-publishing, uh, building out uh, uh, website and content, and lead gen around the um, data center space, the uh, web hosting space, and the internet marketing space. And then I got into a uh, big media with Gannett and USA Today. In all of those positions, you know, I run and built sales teams, run and built marketing departments, and really observed a lot of things that I thought, well, could be improved upon. Some things worked well, some things didn't. Um, and, you know, so I kind of built out my own understanding that I wanted to start to communicate with potential clients down the road. And, um, you know, a few years ago, about two years ago, I had the opportunity to do that. Uh, I left USA Today Network and started the Read 5 Group, which is uh, a niche agency. Folk, uh, we specialize in entertainment, healthcare. We'll handle any type of client, but we only take on a limited amount of clients. But we have a a team that's very versed in in healthcare marketing, live event marketing, uh, and really putting social and engagement uh, type of tactics out there, if you will. And, and, and I'll you add know, one more thing, I'm Mike. Sure you've I've, hit I've also a lot started of, uh, roadblocks and hurdles with the last year dealing with um, so many companies having to go virtual. Well, that's absolutely right. But one thing that's interesting um, is. We about a, a year ago we started a rethink marketing podcast, not not to be salesy, not to try to get clients, but just you know to continue the conversation with what was going on in the industry, what was going on in the world, frankly, and really how that related to marketing, uh, things that companies could do in that transition period. So you know, fast forward to today as we're getting ready to open. Hopefully, if everything continues to go as well as it has, then maybe we've had a lot of learnings in the last year. Uh, to move forward, but but there were obstacles. A lot of clients in, in the event space absolutely shut down, and so we used that time to really be there for them, do a lot of uh, no charge pro bono work just to keep their message out there, so people knew that you know they were still around and keeping them updated on when events will come back. Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest. I, I feel like the biggest mistakes that a business can make is just continue to do things the same way they've always done them just because they don't literally have a vision for um, keeping things fresh. And it keeps you really behind the times. And, you, you know, some of the obvious um, ones we think of as Blockbuster versus Netflix. And as the story goes, you know, Netflix right. goes, hey, let's partner and go digital and virtual. And they're like, nope. And then we see what happened to Blockbuster. <laughs> what are some of the things that you see or work with your clients on to kind of keep them cutting edge? Well, so in healthcare, I'll, I'll use healthcare to start with. Healthcare is, um, I don't want to say outdated, but the, based on the business model of healthcare, referral based, somewhat conservative from the financial backing of many health systems, et cetera, um, and the HIPAA restraints and so forth for some of the type of marketing tactics that you'd want to do. Um, you know, there's challenges as far as, um, you know, status quo. And so we're, we're try, we try to get them to think a little bit more forward thinking on a patient journey, on the needs of your patients, on engaging with them, not for coming to see us for healthcare, but but to building positive 
experiences around the content that they would support. And I know that sounds basic. And one of the things if, if, if people hear me talk with what they'll hear that I say quite a bit is, you know, you can't be tuned out or turned off by the basics. Uh, you know, I, you know, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. I, I know you do. But the difference between mediocrity and really being successful, whether it's owning a business, whether it's running marketing campaigns, is you do have to pay respect to the basics and make sure that you're doing the day-to-day things because that will separate success from failure, in my opinion. You know, you know, basics reminds me of the old uh, adage, you know, blocking and tackling. You know, you, you, you can't yeah. get the fancy okay. plays in football before you can really, really get good at blocking and tackling. And how many times have you seen in a key clutch play that this uh, cornerback comes to tackle the wide receiver and he just throws a shoulder and he just blows right, right. by him? I think there's so right. many things in business that are that you know, blocking and tackling or the basics. What are some of the things that you teach your clients to do that are the basics, but then you kind of um, teach them how to elevate that so that it does take them to the next level without losing the nuance of sticking with the basics? So the first thing that I do as far as uh, training the basics, if you will, we'll take a look at social right now because I mean, I hate even using the word social because everything we do is social outside of a, a print ad or something like that. But, I mean, if, it, if it's out there digitally, it's tied to social. And so w- what I say is let's look at your social calendar. Let's look at your social calendar. Let's look at your social schedule. Are you – because I want to know what it looks like. And if you say, oh, yeah, we're posting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, anytime we get something interesting, we post it. The first thing I want to do is say, listen, you need to be very consistent with your social. I know if something comes up, you want to post it out. You want to say you have a new doc. You want to say there's a new uh, band being announced or a new event being announced. But you've got to be disciplined and and strict with consistency of a social schedule. It's important uh, for creating an audience that way. Now, having said that, there's always going to be incremental times to put something out. So you're going to make room for that, but your social strategy can't be, I'll get to it. Oh, I'll do it after lunch. It it has to be set and and taken very uh, responsibly for the power that it has to your entire overall marketing campaign. The other thing that I would uh, often look at right away is what's called um, a, a, a culture clutter. Clutter culture, which most people are familiar with, would be the shows that you see on HGTV where you can't believe somebody's living in such a, a mess uh, like the hoarding shows and so forth. Yeah. The, the words are a little bit different. This is actually a culture clutter. We're focused so much on culture right now. It's not you can wear jeans on Friday. It's not you can be 10 minutes late to drop your child or something, responsibility you have to do in the morning. Culture is about being human right now. And so when you look around your office, this is, you know, just to go right back to your question, when you look around your marketing department, you see bodies, you see what you see, but what you can't see is all the things that are cluttering up each person's culture. Those are only seen by them. And so if you could have the power to see all that, your, your floor would likely look very crowded, very disorganized. And so I think we have to go back and we have to define a culture of the business. Do everybody, does everybody on your marketing floor or in your business, frankly, know what your vision is, know what your mission is? Do they understand it? Do they buy into it? Um, you know, that is how you win in business, but particularly in marketing, everybody has to have, uh, I'd say a horse in the race or vested interest in everything that they do impacting the mission of where the business is trying to go. And so I have, a, I have my, my clients look at, we look at those things first and foremost because everything else we're going to recommend isn't going to work unless we've got a, a very cohesive culture type team. Yeah. You know, and one thing you, you said a second ago made me think of something too because you, you mentioned that you work um, a lot in the medical space. And so mm-hmm. these clients of yours will need their target audience to understand what they do, to what, what problem they can solve. And I feel like there's um, something that you probably work with your clients on, but I think it bears um, talking about here, which is um, in, in marketing, it's kind of, I've heard it called techno babble, meaning um, here comes, you know, one of your clients that's in the whatever medical um, uh, vertical and they know everything about what they do and they know what they solve but the target audience doesn't they're not very well versed in all of the things they don't you cannot ever assume that your prospective 
patients knows exactly what you do. So how do you work with your clients to make sure their messaging is dialed in so that then their content marketing is now better received? Well, so that, that's actually a fantastic uh, observation and question. I, I used to work with, uh, and I'll give her a shout out, her name was Kim Sherlock in the metro uh, Cincinnati area, and she always, she was a strategist uh, uh, on the team, um, and she always used to say how, you know, we're, we're so close to it, we don't understand what other people wouldn't understand, and so you've really got to step away, and it, it's a skill, and it takes discipline, you really got to step back and look at what you know so well and understand that maybe other people don't know it so well and how do you get them to that point? So I think that ties to what you're asking me and that is we know, taking a healthcare example as you're saying or any business really, you, you, you know who you are but does the audience or the community know who you are? And I would say that's often very different. So the challenge is how do you take what you think you are, what you want to be, what you believe that your definition is and make sure that that's the exact definition that's out there in the community, to your point, to tie to content and all that. And so, you know, sure, you can do focus groups and you can do a lot of that stuff. But for me, it's something that I, I like to do, which is called creating in tender channels. It's multi-layered marketing. And so we put out, you know, we have this meeting and we say, okay, let's say, you know, let's say we come out of that with five different takes on what the message is that we want it to be that we think it is and then we kind of play with that and kind of come left of it right of it and have one right on mark and so we put out some content and and we really do a lot of metric and a lot of uh watching and recording if you will to see who's engaging with what and then we take each of those as separate channels and we continue to market to them uh as we push them down the funnel and ultimately turn into patient acquisition and so I guess the long answer to your question is I don't think we say this is what it is. I think we have to go to market with what we believe it is. We have to go to market with what it could be to the left and what it could be to the right, put out content and things that vet that and test it, and then learn from that and start to take away what doesn't work. It's almost like growth hacking. Take away what doesn't work and then double down on what we're seeing traction on. And when we get through that, we start to understand what our definition is in the community that's getting response and engagement. And if we like that, great. If we don't like that, that's a whole other challenge. Yeah. And, you know, um, we could spend about four and a half more hours on just the one point alone of like um, the buyer's journey whether it's a patient or a client or whatever you're, we're talking about, but in, in your world of, uh, you know, patient acquisition and the medical field, every prospective patient looking at whatever vertical of, of medical that it is, um, they've got questions in their mind. And I would suspect that sometimes they don't even know the question, you know, the old saying, they don't know what they don't know. So right. it is imperative that the, you know, whatever clinic or the, uh, the the doctor's office is creating the right content that is making the prospective patients go, oh, that, that, you know, I never thought that, that's a really good point. And then the ne- that leads to the next question and the next question. And it's not selling and telling, it is educating. So I think right. that's such a big piece of your marketing and content equation, right? Well, it is for me, and I think it has to be for everybody, and, and obviously you agree with that, and, and that is that, you know, we, I mean, I think we, sometimes we get into a marketing chair, and we say, I'm going to create this, and I'm going to create that. It's a science lab. We want to experiment. We want to turn the levers and pull the knobs and do all the stuff that's fun in marketing, and there's plenty of time to do that, but at a certain point, um, we're kind of like brokering the relationship between the audience and the services. And we have to kind of understand that conversation and kind of mediate it and, and, and almost broker the deal, like I said, at the end. So there's a mutual agreement. And I think in healthcare, and I would say this translates to most businesses, is you can get too focused, again, on what you think the message is. You, you know, some people think that, well, doctors drive uh, engagement, doctors drive engagement, product drives engagement, product drives engagement. I would say the hospital, the healthcare facility, the business, to the younger generation coming up, they want to know what the organization is doing in the community for the community. Do they, are they leaving a green footprint? Things that are important to that generation. We really have to understand that it's, it's reputation management is important, but it's for the facility and the business, in my opinion, more than the doctor or the product. Yeah. 
Yeah, because now you're taking a like a storytelling kind of a tell us out your brand story approach. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something uh, in, in if you're doing things in the community, um, there's a wonderful website called callsmarketing.com and they talk about mm -hmm. the halo effect. Because if your uh, prospective target audience patients sees you as doing things in the community and giving back and serving and whatever it is, volunteering or sponsoring this or that um, in the community. Now, all of a sudden, they view your brand with this halo effect over it, and yeah. it really pr provides either a boost or some insurance protection in a sense. And I've, I, there's literally a study there on their website that talks about, you know, if there was a brand that had a little hiccup in there, whatever, maybe they, they, uh, you know, I don't know, had a customer service issue. It's going to be better um, received because they go, oh, they're probably, oh, I, we forgive you because right. we see you're just awesome doing these things. So that's a really big point that you're bringing up there about that, you know, telling the brand story. No, I, I, I agree with you. I, 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 you know, I would say that, you know, I understand in healthcare, and again, I'm staying in healthcare just because there's some different innuendo, there's some different innuendo there, but I think it translates to other businesses. But you know, healthcare understands that your insurance is going to drive you where you should go. But in, in healthcare, you want to, you don't have to be the end game in the conversation. You just need to be part of the conversation. And I would say for businesses, you know, that are in consumer products or, you know, home improvement, whatever their business, real estate, et cetera, the, the bottom line is you want the business at the end of the day, but you don't want to cut yourself off from getting future business. So just because you can't you know, attribute an immediate sale to something you did. It's hard to measure what we're talking about, but I think it's foolish not to understand that it's going to have long-term benefit for your business referrals, uh, you know, just people talking positively about you. Yeah, 100%. Well, Eric, it was really uh, wonderful chatting with you. Let's uh, wrap up with what's the best way that um, people could reach out, connect with you, learn more about your agency and uh, what you do uh, to serve your community. Sure. So for me, so there's two, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on, you know, I'm on Twitter, et cetera. And you can find uh, me by Eric Reed and Reed five group. Those will, those will come up. Um, really. I also do, you know, like you, I do a podcast uh, and I started doing that about a year ago. And the name of the podcast is take five, the rethink marketing podcast. And we just really, me and my partner get into just fun conversations around sales and marketing. And, and we get some interesting guests on. Um, and then, of course, my, my, my website for my agency and business services is uh, read5group.com. That's just R-E-E-D, the number five, G-R-O-U-P.com. Um, and I appreciate you letting me plug those. And, I, you know, just for anybody who might be listening, I just like to talk shop and talk marketing. So, you know, um, don't, don't feel like if you reach out to me that, that, that we've got to move forward on something. I just like having conversations with people. Excellent. Well, I just uh, love chatting as well. It's really great talking with people who, you know, knows the business and knows, uh, you know, how to uh, serve and, and give value. So thanks so much for coming on today, Eric. Well, I appreciate you for having me. I really do. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.